This was a trick that was shown to me by a florist friend of mine. He had two sons. One was a budding genius. <laughs> the other one was a blooming idiot. Hmm, <laughs> smells good. Ooh, doesn't smell too good. <laughs> oh, wow. This is a friend of mine. <laughs> well, amazing little skunk. This is our spring skunk. You can have a lot of fun with him, make him look real. And the feather flowers are great to use for an opening effect. Feather flowers and the zombie flard. And this is our friend the spring skunk. This is a trick the late, great Howard Thurston used to do. He said, each night I stand in amazement, wondering where the flaming torch has gone. The vanishing torch. This is a trick called space silks. It's a great opening trick for an act. Very colorful. Some bright red and yellow and blue scarves placed in this transparent tube so you can see them. One, two, three. And they vanish right before your eyes. It's a little trick with a uh, the white scarf. And uh, just shake the scarf a little bit. And uh, you get colors coming. And more colors. And more colors called Silk Cascade. This doesn't look appropriate with my suit, but if you're wearing tails or if you're a clown or if you, uh, you want, you're wearing white gloves um, and you, uh, you take the, uh, the white gloves off, um, you can do a, a, a pretty dramatic thing by just tossing the gloves in the air and they change to a bouquet of flowers. This is a trick called the Egyptian, Egyptian water box. And a uh, little box you can, you can see through and, and you can wave your hand and produce scarves or whatever you would like. But even more amazing, watch this. I'll pour liquid into the box. And even though I poured liquid into the box, the box is empty. Now wave my hand and not only the liquid reappears but a glass the Egyptian water box this is a trick that I've used for years it's very deceptive a little tube you can see through in fact uh, I went to great expense to show you the inside I call this the they call this the genie tube and you snap your fingers and you can produce scarves more scarves more scarves it's amazing, and uh, as you can see, there's nothing in it. Uh, we'll do that again. Scarves, more scarves, even more scarves. It's an amazing, the genie tube. Have this little mini table sort of affair with a uh, uh, foulard draped over it, and uh, uh, a little box that you can see through that sits on top of this. Uh, this little table affair. And uh, I will pull the scarf out of the little box, and then you can magically produce scarves. You could produce more scarves than that, or flowers, whatever you wanted. And then you uncover and you have a bowl of wine or colored water or whatever you want that you produce. It's called the Aldini Bowl production. This is a great liquid trick, a little. Uh, Water, I'll pour some water in this red bowl. That should be enough. Cover the bowl with this cloth. Watch it carefully. Water and bowl are gone. Don't laugh, you may have bags in your pants someday too, but this is a paper bag and a glass, and a little milk. I know this is real milk. I drain it from a cow's crankcase myself. Pour some milk into the glass, just enough to fill the glass, and a little bit more. Now I'm going to attempt to turn the, the bag and the glass upside down without spilling the milk. It's a good trick if you can do it. If you can't, you get wet feet. One, two, three. Didn't spill a drop. Isn't that amazing? Oh, one drop. Isn't that amazing? Glasses milk. 
A glass of milk suspended in mirror. Look at that. Floats, no wires, no strings, nothing. I see you're not impressed. Mm -hmm. the, the trick you saw previously was the milk pitcher and the tricky tumbler. Uh, we have a couple of versions of milk pitcher. This is the standard. Then we have one that's for professionals that's sealed, so you don't have to carry liquid with you. It has the liquid sealed in it. Then we also have a junior model here, the Adams milk pitcher. It's smaller and a little less expensive. Uh, can be used also. In addition to the tricky tumbler, there is another version that we'd like to have you know about. It's called the tricky cocktail shaker. You tell them you're going to make a milkshake, and you have a, uh, uh, a shaker like this. Uh, with a uh, little lid that goes on it, and you put the shaker into the bag, and uh, they say, and I'll put the milk, oh wait, I <laughs> have to take the lid off to put the milk in, and then you pour the milk into the, uh, into the bag. But with this one, instead of tossing the bag behind you, you can actually toss the bag into the audience or whatever, because it is completely gone. Milk, bag, glass, everything is gone from the bag. So that's the tricky cocktail shaker. It enables, enables you to throw the bag into the audience. Would you turn the lights on so I can read the paper? <laughs> oh, great, that's a lot better. Yeah, you know, when a magician's home, a lot of times I'm sitting at home reading the paper in the evening. It gets dark, I turn the light on, read the paper. And I always like to have a little, uh, a little snack uh, <laughs> there. I, uh, I drink milk a lot. Uh, and so uh, I have a pitcher of milk here. I'll pour a little milk in the, uh, into the the cone here. Um, oops. <laughs> oh boy. Um, wait a minute. I don't think I want that milk. <laughs> oh. The milk disappeared. The light went out. I don't understand that. Let me check. Let me check here. <laughs> I don't understand why that would happen. Um, let me see. Hmm. Oh. There is the milk. If you like real pretty magic, this is called the magic tea kettle. You can take this tea kettle and pour a red drink. A green drink. A yellow drink. A blue drink. Some people ask me sometimes what makes it do that, and I'll show you. I have, look inside here, there's a red scarf, and they're not wet, and a green scarf, and a blue scarf, and a yellow scarf. Now, once they're removed, <laughs> then you can pour just pure water. The magic tea kettle. This is a great production box. You can show the audience. It doesn't have to be sitting on a table. Your assistant can be holding this box and then you can open the box and produce Many more scarves than I'm producing here, if you'd like. Scarves and scarves and scarves. More than that, if you'd like. You can continue to produce scarves, but it doesn't have to be objects like that. It can be, you could get three balls out and juggle, if you'd like. A <laughs> uh, can of Diet Pepsi, if you're thirsty. Oh, and here's my old friend, <laughs> Rocky. Rocky the raccoon. And <laughs> here is the skunk, and you still have room for more. It's an amazing production box. If you want to produce products for a company, a prize presents for a birthday party, or just make a large production of silks or animals or whatever, it's a fantastic effect. This trick with a, a mirror, solid mirror in a frame. In fact, you can hand the mirror out to people they can examine it, solid mirror, and a bag. I will place the mirror, mirror into the bag, zip it up, 
Now, even though the mirror has been placed in the bag, shrouded from the dark, you can bend it double like that. Bend it back and forth. <coughs> even, even better, take a needle, penetrate the center of the mirror. Zip it. Take out the mirror. And they can examine it again. Little tube you can see through. It's not an ordinary tube. It has spots painted all over it. It's what we call a heavy air tube. If I place a piece of rope into this tube, you notice it remains suspended in there. If I blow, it drops out. That's because it's full of heavy air, this tube. If I would put a ball in there, it would remain suspended. If I blow in it, it drops out. Uh, you could do it with a heavier object, like a, uh, like a glass tumbler. It would remain, if I blow, the glass tumbler would, would drop out. Uh, I could do it even with liquid pour water into the tube. It remains there. If I cool the glass down, pass it through, brings the water back out, and it's still an empty tube except for heavy air. This is a trick you uh, tell a story about. Uh, you had to babysit one day for your youngsters or your uh, uh, neighbor's children or whatever, and uh, while you were babysitting, one of the youngsters got into a fountain pen and spilled ink all over uh, uh, some carpet. You took your handkerchief out and wiped up the uh, um, ink, but you got it stains all over your, uh, your handkerchief. And in the meantime, while you were doing that, one of the other youngsters got into some paints, and you wiped the paints up with another handkerchief, another clean handkerchief, got paint all over <laughs> that handkerchief. And then about that time, I hope you can see this all right. Uh, the maid came in and uh, gave me a few kisses, and uh, I had to wipe the lipstick off, and I had lipstick stains all over this scarf. Uh, I didn't know what to do, and the maid suggested this new soap called Splash. Splash, she said, it's phenomenal. It, uh, it, it beats all of the products on the market, she said. You just put the... Uh, um, Put the, put the, I don't know too much, I didn't do much about it, so I said I'd use it. So she just, just put it, <laughs> use this, and I, uh, I didn't know anything, <laughs> what she meant by it. I just put the, uh, uh, I'd use my magic wand, and I just put the, uh, uh, the scarves into the soap, and she said, no, <laughs> you, you, you misunderstood me. She said, it's, it's great stuff, but you, you need to put it, <laughs> need to put it in the, uh, in the washing machine. I said, no, you don't understand. See, I'm a magician. I'm a magician. I'll just shake this up a little bit. And uh, uh, sure enough, I'll just uh, <laughs> uh, and they're all clean. Oh, <laughs> in here. No, there's nothing in there. In fact, uh, I'll show you there's nothing in there tear it open completely, and that's called soft soap. The trick you've just seen, soft soap, a great trick, is much stronger if you tear the box up as I did. And we have the refill boxes like this. Uh, you can buy packs of those, and uh, then you have new boxes to use. It's much stronger than just trying to show it empty. It's much stronger if you tear it up, so you might want soft soap refills. This is a great trick called stratospheres, and uh, it lends itself to a lot of stories. If you do any school shows or anything, uh, you could do a traffic light uh, safety show with it because you have ye yellow, red, and green here like traffic lights. Uh, so there's a lot of, lot of possibilities. There's a, a little presentation that goes with it about uh, uh, three, uh, three little boys that go to school together, and you talk about their school bus, and uh, the one boy is Mr. Green. <laughs> His name is Green, and he's, uh, 
he's one of those go-getters, you know, always uh, ahead of everybody and everything and really, really uh, <laughs> energetic. And he always gets on the bus first. And there's a boy that's kind of yellow and sort of backward and lets everybody push ahead of him. Uh, he gets on next. But then there's a, a little red-headed boy. We call him Red. Uh, he's the bully. He gets on last. But believe it or not, you've seen people like that. He always crowds out first. <laughs> and uh, sometimes, uh, uh, sometimes uh, the little boy that's yellow gets there first and sneaks on the bus before anybody else. And then green gets on. Red's always the last one there. But being the bully is, he pushes out first and crowds out first. One day, one day, little green <laughs> and little yellow got on the bus. And they were really delighted because the bus left before... Red got there, the little bully. And Red uh, was ho still home in bed, and believe it or not, he disappeared from there. He's kind of a tricky little guy, and still beat him back to the bus. First one off the bus. That's called stratospheres. Great trick to do for kid shows. A lot of possibilities for routines. This is a classic in magic called the zombie ball. I have this steel ball. And this steel ball has strange properties. Uh, it, when it's shrouded from the light, I'll use this uh, black cloth. I'll show you the cloth on both sides. And I'll place the cloth over the ball. Now, when this ball, as I said, is shrouded from the light for a few moments, it tends to gain strength and power. And, oh, wow, look at that. Float it. <laughs> Come back here. And it... Uh, hmm. Right up here on the edge, do a balancing act. Oh, there it is between my legs. <laughs> Back up again. The zombie ball. Mysterious, mysterious bit of magic. The zombie ball. This is a uh, great little effect with a white scarf. I'll tie a little knot in the end of the scarf, and I use a top hat. You could use a box or anything, it doesn't matter. Drop the uh, scarf into the hat. Along with the scarf, uh, I use this, uh, this black uh, cloth or foulard here, and uh, you can see that uh, there's nothing in it. And I'm going to place it over the top hat for a moment, and a strange thing happens. Ooh, rising up out of the hat, believe it or not, it is <laughs> the little scarf. Jumps over in front, back in behind like that. An amazing thing. Sometimes uh, when you look for it, <laughs> it even disappears <laughs> and yet comes back <laughs> and uh, does that. You may have seen David Copperfield do this on one of his TV specials. Uh, come back down over the hat and... Uh, and sure enough, back in the hat, this is called Don Wayne's Dancing Handkerchief. The great thing about it is it's a kind of floating effect you can do uh, at one end of a living room. You can do it uh, in a lot of conditions, and you don't have to have an assistant. You don't have to have a stage to set it up. Don Wayne's Dancing Handkerchief. This is a beautiful piece of magic. Uh, we call it the crystal casket. It's a, uh, exactly that, a casket or a box, a clear <laughs> box that you can see completely through and uh, a scarf. I'm going to take the scarf, roll it into a little tight bundle. I'll take a, a, a magic uh, pen, tap my hand, and the scarf vanishes. <laughs> Watch the one, two, three, and here it is back in the crystal casket. This is a trick called King Monty. It's great. It's visual for a large group. It's a fantastic trick. Uh, I, years ago on the streets of New York, uh, I got taken by a con man doing the three-card Monty. This is a large version of that. In fact, 
uh, he used cards. These are 20 times the size of the cards that he used, so if I can fool you with these, I have to be 20 times as clever. Uh, you have two, two losers and a winner. Two kings, uh, two black kings are the losers. We'll place one on, loser on either side, and the winner, the red queen, goes right here in the center. I'll make one move like this. Now, he said to me, if you can tell me where the red queen is, you win a dollar. If you, move, <laughs> if, you, if you miss, you lose a dollar. I said, that's easy. It's over here. He said, you owe me a dollar. He said, actually, it's not over here either. It's uh, way over here. He said, I'll do that again. I'll do that again. He said, I'll place a, uh, a loser on this side, a loser on this side, and I'll place the red queen, the winner, right here in the center. He said, I'll make just one move like that. Now, he said, if you can tell me where the winner is, you win a dollar. If you miss, you lose a dollar. I said, that's easy. It's over here. He said, that's two dollars you owe me. I said, wait a minute. If it's not over there, then it has to be one of these two. I'll say it's in the center. He said, that's three dollars you owe me. I said, wait a minute. If it's not there, it has to be over here. He said, that's four dollars you owe me. <laughs> I, I, I said, wait a minute. I don't, I don't understand. You must, I don't think you even have a red queen. He said, that's five dollars you owe me. <laughs> five dollars you owe me. I said, well, wait a minute. I know one thing. If it's, if it's over here, it couldn't be the one of these. He said, that's six dollars, show me. I said, well, it couldn't be over here. He said, that's seven dollars, show me. I said, wait a minute. I don't understand. He said, let me, let me explain. It's very simple. He says, I have one, one winner and two losers. Now, he said, I'll, uh, I'll explain this. In fact, I'll make it really easy for you. He said, I will uh, mark, uh, I'll mark the card. I'll put a, a loser over here and another loser over here. And he said, now I will mark the winner. That way you can tell immediately where the winner is. I'll mark it like that. Now you can't miss. <laughs> he said, I'll just make one little move like this, and uh, where do you think the winner is? <laughs> I said, uh, it's over here. He said, that's eight dollars you owe me. <laughs> I said, wait a minute. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's, it must be here. He said, that's nine dollars you owe me. I said, well, it couldn't be. <laughs> he said, that's right. It is over here. It's the one I marked all the time. I said, boy, he said, wait, I'll make it really easy for you. He said, I'll eliminate one of the cards. I'll eliminate one of the losers. We'll just use a winner and a loser. And he said, to make it real easy for you, uh, I will mark the, mark the winner. He says, a loser and a winner. He said, I'll mark the winner, and I won't even move them. I said, uh, then it has to be over here. He said, no, it's not there. He said, I'll tell you, I'll give another chance. Double or nothing, double or nothing. Where would you say it is? <laughs> I said, it's over here. He said, that's $20 you owe me. It's over here. This is a, uh, a little trick by Brother John Hammond called Final Aces. And uh, I removed four aces from the deck. And uh, I use... Uh, use the four aces in this trick. Uh, actually, we'll place one ace here, one here, and one here. And along with the aces, I use actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve indifferent cards, um, as you can see. And uh, I take these, uh, these cards and uh, deal them on top, three on each ace like this. And then I will tap this pile, go through the pile one at a time, slowly and deliberately, and the ace is gone from there. Tap this pile, look. The second ace has disappeared, and finally the fourth ace vanishes. And believe it or not, the aces are back over here where we began. I'll, I'll do that again. <clears throat> and uh, this time I'll do something, uh, I'll, I'll do it in slow motion, actually. I'll show you each card as I put it down. The Ace of Diamonds here, Ace of Clubs in the center here, Ace of Hearts here, and the Ace of Spades down here. I'll place an indifferent card on each, on each Ace. So that you see every card as it goes down. Incidentally, this is an easy-to-do routine. There is no sleight of hand. Um, I, will, I have actually one, two, three, four cards, a total of four, three cards and an ace. Um, one, two, three cards, and another ace. And, of course, three more cards, 
and a uh, another ace. Now if I tap this ace, look, it's gone. Tap this ace, it's gone. And of course, that ace disappears. And that means, if I'm not mistaken, sure enough, here they are back over here. Let me do this uh, one more time. And uh, again, I will spread the aces like this, deal the cards on top of the aces like this. So we have one, two, three cards, and of course, the ace of diamonds. One, two, three cards, and the ace of clubs. And of course, over here again, we have three more cards and the ace of hearts. Now, I will tap that and look. The ace is gone from there. Tap that, and the ace is gone from there. And of course, if I tap this, the ace vanishes here. And believe it or not, back the way we began over here, final ace routine by Brother John Hammond. And as I said, it's easy to do, no sleight of hand. I'd like to tell you the difference between confusion and illusion. <laughs> uh, everyone has heard of, uh, of what they call a hole card in poker and blackjack. That's the card that's dealt face down. I have another type of hole card here. I call this a hole card because it has a hole. <laughs> and this one I call a hole card because it is a hole card. I have another one that's a hole card and, of course, another hole card. Now, the hole cards are colored on one side, so if you place a hole card behind a hole card, <laughs> it appears to be a spot card. The same is true of the other pair. Now, actually, if I would blow on one of those, it becomes a real spot card, a spot that doesn't come off, <laughs> which leaves me with two hole cards <laughs> and a hole card. Now, if I would uh, take a hole card and hold it behind a hole card, <laughs> it makes it look like a spot card. And if I would tap this hole card with it a few times, I get a card with a whole bunch of spots. Now, it doesn't take a whole card to make a whole card look like a spot card. You can do it with just the corner of a whole card, you see. Now, a moment ago, this looked like a spot card. Now it looks like a whole card. Actually, it's neither. Actually, it's a spot card with a hole. So what we have here is a spot card with a hole, a card with a spot that's so big it covers the whole card, a card with a whole bunch of spots, and a spot card. Now, the reason this is so confusing is everyone has been watching the spots. No one's been watching the whole. That's my whole story, and I'm sticking to it. This is called The Whole Thing. It's a great interlude in a magic act, or if you do some MC work, if you just want to speak for a group of people and have a little fun thing to do, The Whole Thing. This is a trick called the Contrast 20th Century Silks, because we use two scarves, two blue scarves. We tie them together, and I'll place them in this tumbler here. I usually have a spectator from the audience hold them. And then you take another scarf of a contrasting color. That's why they call it the contrast 20th century silks. Roll this into a little tight bundle into my fist like this. Take a little magic woofle dust, sprinkle it on there like that. Do this, and look, it's right between the other two. Tied between the other two. Contrast 20th century silks. This is, a, this is kind of a fun trick to do. Um, this uh, is uh, what we call the Loda Bowl. I should have emptied this earlier, though. I'll, uh, I'll empty it out. Uh, I, you, you can't have any water in this when you're going to do it. While, uh, before I do that trick, though, let me show you this. Um, this is uh, a trick with some tissue paper. I call this a sneeze trick. That's why I call it tissue paper. And uh, I use a, uh, a piece of yellow and orange paper and a piece of black paper, and you tear the paper up. Actually, I'm tearing the paper down. That's a terrible thing to say. But in any event, the idea is to tear the paper uh, in, into pieces, and you fold the pieces together, and I'm going to magically restore the pieces just by magic, by sheer magic. I'll put them back together. In fact, if you'll come up, young lady, would you come up a moment? I'll show you something. I'll let you, I'll blow on them like this and let you see that they really are restored. Look at that. There we are, back in one piece. Oh, <laughs> well, wait a minute. <laughs> well, that looks nice with your dress. I'll let you, uh, I'll let you wear that. There, isn't that nice? <laughs> That's called our paper hat tear. 
you can take the hat off and uh, and I'll let you help me with another another trick here. Um, this is uh, with some steel rings. I have actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight steel rings. Look at that one, make sure it's solid. Find any holes there? No. There's a big one in the middle if you look close. Here's another one, look at that one, make sure it's solid. Two solid steel rings. Kind of rub one ring against the other one, blow on them and they go right together. You didn't get that. Here, take these two, they come apart the same way. You just rub them back and forth. This whole thing is an optical illusion. I hold one ring here, the other one here, I bring it down, at that point they appear to be linked together. Now you're close, you can see they're not, I just have my finger in there. You, you can hit them, drive them, whatever, but you can actually put them together like that. Now I have two, uh, I'll put another one on. Now I have three. Do you have those two apart there yet? <laughs> you don't. Here, I'll tell you what, take the three, maybe you can take those apart. If you take the center one off, you'll have them all apart. I figured that out. Let me, uh, let me show you with these. You looked at these, I'll put, the, put these together. Watch, one, two, three, that's uh, one more time. Now I have three and you have three. Hold yours in a chain like that. Take the center ring, let the other one drop. Now you have two rings on one, rub them, blow on them like that and it comes right off, you see? Now here, I'll tell you what, blow on this one. That's it. Now you're getting the idea. <laughs> we'll do one, one even more amazing. I'll take uh, this ring and, uh, and drive it through here. Now I have four rings, four rings all hooked together. And, and that's the linking ring trick. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Thank you for coming up and helping me. Oh, wait a minute. I'm going to have you help me with one more trick. Uh, before I do that, though, I forgot. I should have emptied this, <laughs> this loadable. Uh, I'll empty this. I, I, I meant to empty that before. Uh, but this is a... Uh, this is a trick with a bottle and a tube. That's the bottle. This is the tube. Look at those. Examine them carefully. While you're examining those, I'll do the trick with these. No, I have the same thing, a bottle and a tube. Hold the bottle on your hand like this. Show the tube to everyone and place it on top like that. Put your hand on top and do as I do. Ready? One, two, Three. That's the idea and uncover the bottle. Just take the... No, no, no. You're, 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 you're upside down. Turn it, turn it right side up and start over. You got it? Okay, here we go. One, two, three. That's the idea and uncover the bottle. No, wait, you must have the wrong bottle. I'll tell you what, I'll take that bottle, you take this bottle, okay? Show the tube. <laughs> Nothing in the tube. Place the tube over the bottle. Put your hand on top and do as I do. Ready? One, two, three. That's the idea uncover the... No, 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 no. See, see, I'm like this, and, and you're like this. <laughs> you're mixed up there some way, and I, and I don't understand. That's the tricky bottles. That's a real fun trick. Thank you for coming up and helping me. Oh, I wanted to show you the loadable trick, too. This, uh, you, uh, I should have emptied that. I forgot. Uh, the loadable. This is a great trick to use through, uh, throughout a, uh, a, a show. Every so often, you periodically pick up the bowl, empty it, and then go on. And it gets to be very funny to people because uh, all of a sudden you say, wait a minute, I, I need to empty this just a moment and uh, empty it again. And you do that a number of times through your, through your act. I enjoy doing nothing. In fact, there's nothing I enjoy doing more than doing nothing. And I knew if I wanted to be able to continue doing nothing, uh, I'd need to be able to pull some strings. In other words, I'd need some connections. So I invented this do-nothing machine. Now, it's a very simple machine. In fact, there's nothing to it. Actually, it's just a blue pom-pom, which is connected to a yellow pom-pom, which is connected to a red pom-pom, which is connected to a white pom-pom, which is connected to a blue pom-pom, which is connected to a yellow pom-pom, which is connected to a red pom-pom. You know, the worst thing about doing nothing is it's hard to tell when you're finished. You may have noticed that. Sometimes if I do this long enough, people applaud. Sometimes if I do this long enough, people applaud. No. No, really, it's nothing. <laughs> Somebody asked me the other day, they said, what in the world, what in the world is inside there that enables you to keep doing that? I said, I'll show you. Nothing. <laughs> in fact, it's full of nothing. Uh, I'll pour some out on the floor here. After the show, if you take some of that home with you, put it under your pillow tonight. When you wake up in the morning, you know what you'll find there? Nothing. Somebody asked me the other day if I would sell my secret to doing nothing. I said, nothing doing. Because if I sold my secret to doing nothing and everybody started doing nothing, I might have to start doing something. You may not be too impressed with this, but you have to admit it's better than nothing. That's the pom-pom trick. Great little trick comes with that routine plus another routine. Thank you, Ginger, for coming up and helping me. I have some scarves here. I have a, an orange scarf, a yellow scarf, and a green scarf. I'm going to ask you to hold those, if you would, Rex. Mm -hmm. Hold it tight there. That's good. I have another orange, yellow, and a green scarf here. I'm going to take the orange one and the yellow one, tie them together. Use a square knot. You notice that, Ginger? Tie, I learned to tie that when I was a Boy Scout. I was a Boy Scout until I was about 16. Then I became a Girl Scout. That's the way it works out. And I'm going to ask... Uh, 
if you would just uh, hold the scarves that uh, Michelle that uh, I've tied together there, hold them just like that. Now, Ginger, I'm going to let you do the magic. This is a magic fan. I want you to take the magic fan and just fan the knots from here to there right across like that, okay? Open the fan all the way up wide and, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> tap it on your head. <laughs> That's okay. Just fan right across like that. Okay. Just open it all the way. Oh, <laughs> you forgot to tap it on your head. I'll tell you what, I'll use a magic wand. Have you ever used a magic wand? The main thing with a magic wand is you wave it up and down like that. You got the idea? Don't go back and forth. That won't work. See, you have to go up and down just like that. See, just take it and go up and down just like that. All right. Just wave it up and down. Boy, <laughs> you, you, you ever had trouble like this? I'll tell you what, we, we have a real problem here. We'll take a knot out of here. You want to hold that? Show it to everyone. Toss it over there in Rex's hand. Terrific. Take another knot from here. Put it right over there. Fantastic. Wouldn't it be amazing if Ginger was able to get the knots from your hand over to there? Would you take a look, see if the knots are actually gone? Sure enough, they're gone from there. But wouldn't it be amazing if they were over there? Let's take a look. Sure enough, there they are over here in the scarves that Rex's been holding all this time. That's the 20th century silks using the breakaway fan and the breakaway wand. Thank you, Ginger, for helping me. Thank you both for helping. Shelly has a friend of ours here. And uh, I'll uh, take our friend. Come on. Thank you. And I'll place our friend in this box. And and the dove is gone. No, it really is. It really is. You can uh, hang a feather duster here if you want. Let it drop. Everybody thinks the dove is still there. Show it. And it's, it can be a good sucker vanish if you'd like. That's called our uh, nightclub dove vanish. Now we have two of our friends here. Terrific. Beautiful, beautiful animals. Um, I'll place, uh, place this friend right in here. Get in there. There we are. And uh, another one of our friends <coughs> goes in here. Get in there. Your, with your friend and and again it's gone and again you can have a feather duster taped here drop it loose and the feathers show and everybody thinks the dove's still there you can turn it around and Take the feather duster and dust this. Make a real funny ending to it, if you'd like. That's called our deluxe take-apart vanish. This is our drawer box. And you can use it for all sorts of magical things and produce our friends. And look, we have another one here. The drawer box. This is our uh, drawer box. You can show the box empty. Wave your hand. And look. A bunny. This is called our Miracle Dove Act. And we have our two friends here. Uh, we'll take uh, one of our friends. Uh, whoops, don't get away from me here. Just uh, put him over here. Uh, okay, stay there. And now if I can get our other friend. Terrific. Watch it. Don't get away from me. Boy, they're hard to handle. Just, <laughs> there we are. Get, <laughs> go in there. Stay there. Good. Now. This is an exciting trick called the Bengal net. Have a little uh, net here that you can see through, and uh, we'll uh, hook it into kind of a transparent bag here. 
I'll place a red scarf in there, and our friend goes in there too. Let me hook the center so our friend doesn't fly away. And watch this, one, two, three. And <laughs> our friend has vanished, vanished from the net, the Bengal net. This, uh, this is a great thing if you're using livestock like our bunny. It's neat because you can see the bunny in there. See the bunny in there? See him? <laughs> oh, one, two, three, the bunny is gone. That's our window flip over box. Great to vanish a livestock. I have a little uh, slate here. I'm going to um, draw a little picture here of um, not a real good artist, but uh, do the best I can here. Uh, a little picture of a of a bunny. I'm going to put the little picture of the bunny in here, and we're going to make a very magical thing happen. Let's see if anything's happened yet. No, nothing's happened yet. Let me peek, see if it's... No, nothing's happened yet. Wait. Let's see. Wow! It did happen. There he is. A real bunny. This is our dagger chest here. Uh, take the dagger out. I'll put the uh, bunny in where everyone can see him. And then I'll put the front in the box. And if you'll give me the the dagger, I'll put the dagger through, and watch. Take the top out, let you hold that, and believe it or not, the bunny is gone. I have a uh, old oaken bucket here, and uh, I'll let everyone see into the bucket. You can see uh, nothing in the bucket, and I'll let... Uh, Shelly put the doves in the bucket. One dove goes in. The second dove goes in. Close the bucket. And I'll let you hold the bucket, if you would. Hold it, and I'll make a... And let's see if the doves disappeared. <laughs> they did. They're gone. And in their place, we have a rabbit. A rabbit, and you can show the bucket bucket is empty. That's the bunny bucket. This is an amazing bit of magic. A little box you can see in it. Uh, show everyone there, shall I? And uh, I'm going to take this scarf, just place it in front of there for a second, and look! A bunny. If you'd like an illusion in your show, you might like this one. Uh, it's easy to carry. Uh, you just carry two, uh, two folding chairs and, uh, and a board. Thank you. And you place a board across the, the, two, uh, the two chairs. I'm sitting on there straight so that uh, they don't slide off. Okay. And uh, if, Shelley, if you'd come in and give me an assist. Uh, I'm going to uh, ask you to hop up on here, if you would, on this board. Terrific. I want you to turn around, put your feet right up here. That's good. And just lean, lay right down. And now I'm going to hypnotize you. Hypnotized. Are you in a deep, deep trance? Yes. Good. <laughs> okay. You didn't know I had those powers, did you? And now we'll wrap you up, and you're, since you're in a deep trance, I don't want to wake you up, and I'll remove this chair. Hmm, let's do some, go a step further, let's take the board out, and look, suspended on the back of that chair. Put the board back before she, she wakes up. Here, back under, and wake her up out of that deep trance. Thank you very much. That's our chair suspension. If you'd like a really flashy illusion, this is called Murder Incorporated. 
Uh, I have my lovely assistant Shelly come in and help me for a moment. Uh, this is a little cabinet. Uh, has a little slide door in the front and the back. And Shelly, if you'll sit in there where everyone can see you. That's terrific. Smile at everyone. <laughs> you want to wave goodbye? Bye. <laughs> okay. I will uh, put the, uh, the front uh, door back in. The back door back in. Okay. You seem a little nervous, Shelly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you are. <laughs> don't feel bad. I'm nervous, too. I've never done this before. <laughs> but don't worry. It works almost every time, Shelly. Every, almost every time. Now, uh, <clears throat> I have these uh, steel blades, and I'm going to place them into the, uh, into the chest. We'll put some over on this side. Let's put one right down straight through from top to bottom like that. <coughs> and that is called Murder Incorporated. Let's take a look. Oh, I hate to, <laughs> but we better. Wow. It's a great illusion. <laughs> Shelley's lost her head over this one. Flashy illusion if you'd like a really neat illusion that you could do. Uh, we'll pull the swords out and uh, see if we can revive Shelley. Shelley? Shelly, are you in there? Shelly? No wonder, no wonder she didn't answer. <laughs> Shelly, are you there? Let's take a look. Oh, there she is. How about a big hand for Shelly? That's great. This is a great illusion called Murder Incorporated. This is one of our most popular illusions. Uh, I'm going to ask Shelly to come up and help me. Shelly, if you'll hop right up here and lay down. Now, you don't have to use your assistant. You can use uh, a member of the audience for this. You can bring someone from the audience. It, it's fun if you're doing a company party. You can get the president of the company up and, and do this, or, or a, a sales manager or whatever. And you put this little, uh, little frame around their body like that. And I have a... Uh, you can use this in your shop, too, as well. You don't have to just uh, buy it for this trick. But this is... <laughs> don't worry about this, Shelley. I've done this lots of times before. In fact, I just saw the lady I used to do this with the other day. She lives in Chicago and St. Louis. <laughs> Actually, she's my half-sister. But uh, I'll, uh, I'm, go I'm going to attempt it. Now, just lay real still, because if you move, it makes kind of a jagged... You know what I mean? I mean, it's, you know... So, so lay, hold real still, and here we go. Top right here. Mm, wow. Something tough there. Must have hit a bone, I guess. I wow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't uh, don't don't go to pieces on me now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll move the uh, frame and uh, pull on her leg and see. Hey, I think she's all right. <laughs> We did it. Thank you, Shelley. If you'd like a, a great illusion that you can use, you could do this at a birthday party. You can do it for a large group. Uh, it's not something you have to preset. You, I mean, you can have it ready, bring it on stage or wherever you're going to use it, and uh, do it. You don't have to get there before the banquet or whatever and set the thing up. And uh, I have a little table here. Shelley, if you'll come in and help me, if you'll just sit down on top of this table, just kind of sit there cross-legged. Now, you don't have to use your assistant. You can use uh, a youngster from an audience or a young lady from an audience. Along with this little table, I use two swords. I'll place one sword across here like this. Another sword we'll fasten over here like this. That's to help support it when I move the base out from underneath the table. Now, believe it or not, Shelley is suspended. Look at that. Suspended in midair. Amazing. In fact, to prove that, we'll pass a hoop over Shelley. Let's do that again. Pass it across again. 
suspended in midair. Place the base back under, and thank you very much for helping me, Shelley. Everyone is interested in losing weight these days, and I have a new method here that I'd like to show you. Uh, I, well, you get someone from the audience. Shelley, would you come up and help me? Um, this is the machine that, uh, that helps you lose weight. It's not an exercise machine. You don't have to do all that exercise or anything. Um, I have uh, two little boards here that come out. If you'll come right around here and just kneel down, put your neck right in there if you would. Now, this is a fantastic machine. Uh, it, it, uh, it, it helps you instantly lose 10 pounds or so. And uh, this just snaps here, and that snaps there. And once that snap, you notice nothing slips out of there. You notice that? <laughs> now, this, the whole the principle of this is very simple. It operates with this stainless steel blade. And at the count of three, you can instantly lose 10 pounds or so. <laughs> You seem a little nervous. <laughs> D don't feel nervous. I, I'm nervous too. I've never done this before. <laughs> no, no, you know you don't have to worry. Uh, I'll tell you what. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three weeks ago when I did this, uh, we had a bit of a problem. Uh, I'll tell you what. Just to be on the safe side, take your your hands and hold on to your ears real tight. That's terrific. If you hold on tight, Shelley, I can guarantee you won't lose your head. <laughs> you, <laughs> you'd rather not. Here, I'll tell you what. You don't have to worry. I'll just put this basket down here and you won't have to worry. <laughs> I was kidding before when I said I'd never done this before. I've done this n n hundreds of times and it works almost every time. <laughs> uh, I, oh, I, I forgot. I should have emptied this from, from the last time. It's been quite a while since it, <laughs> since it didn't work. But uh, I, I'll tell you what, we won't even, we won't, even, we won't use that. I'll just put a newspaper down and, and we, won't, we won't have to worry about it. I'll put the, so the carpet, you know, uh, the, the paper will uh, uh, take care of the carpet there. We won't have to worry about it. Okay, here we go. Now, if I, if I would have carrots or whatever, I could put them in here. And beforehand, I could have cut a cabbage for you to show you how this operates. And at the count of three, one, two, three. <coughs> um, kind of shake your head, if you would, Shelley. Oh, I'm glad to see that. Uh, let's help Sharon Shelley out. Unfortunately, she didn't, <laughs> didn't lose any weight, but uh, we feel real good about that, actually. This is called our French guillotine. It's a great effect for... Uh, for you to use if you want a really nice illusion. I want to remind you of our pure silk scarves. These are 18 inches square. Uh, they're really great to use in magic. We have red, blue, yellow, uh, green, pink, purple, and white and black available and uh, 18 inch scarves. This is an exciting new case uh, for the close-up performers in particular, uh, platform performers. Uh, you can walk in, set this on a banquet table, any place, open it up, and uh, the lid comes off like that. Inside, you have a petition that folds in place like this. Place the top on, and you have a close-up table to perform on. You can set it on a normal banquet table. This is a little higher than it would be on a banquet table. Use your close-up pad. You have plenty of room in the back for your props. It also comes with a large piece of foam like this to cut holes for your cups and balls, slots for decks, whatever, so that when you travel, your everything is protected in your case. It's complete, and when you're Ready to, if you finish your show, you just lift the top off, lift this out, fold it up, goes inside. Your foam with all your props can go inside. The lid goes on. And you make your exit like a real pro. This is our Eureka table base, really nice adjustable magic table base, adjusts for height, whatever heights you like, and uh, goes with this, you can buy the Eureka, Eureka tabletop. You can get a plain tabletop or you can get a tabletop with wells. Uh, you may have seen me earlier in the tape use the wells to vanish uh, uh, items. 
It's a handy table. Makes a very attractive tabletop and table. Eureka tabletop and Eureka base. Uh, anytime you want to make some small object vanish, uh, our, uh, our Eureka tabletop with wells is a great way to do this. As you reach over and pick up a wand, you can dispose of anything, make it vanish, and yet it looks fine. It's a great asset. Our suitcase table makes you look like a real pro. It has shelves in the back for props, and the bottom shelf can be moved up to give you that extra shelf space if you need it. Then after, after the show is over, you can put your props inside the suitcase table, some in the bottom, some above, and then you merely fold the table up and leave like a real pro. The suitcase table is available in regular design with a top hat and cane, or it comes in a clown design for clowns or kid shows, or we can give you what we call the blue indigo design.